Hello everyone, my name is Ankit Varma and today we are learning the algorithm for bubble sort. Here we are having the array A which contains n elements. Let us suppose that the elements are 4, 3, 5 and 2. As we are learning the algorithm, so here we know that the array index value we are assuming will start from 1. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. So these are the 4 index values where we have the elements. So here we have the n elements. That means 4 elements are there. The bubble sort algorithm sort the array. That means it arranges the array which is having the n elements. So this algorithm will sort the elements into ascending order. Line number 1 of the algo says that repeat step 2 and 3. That means step number 2 and 3 will be repeated for the value of k is equal to 1 to n minus 1. So here we have the variable k whose value is right now 1. So hypothetically we can say that k is having the value which is 1. And the value of k can go till n minus 1. And we know that the value of n is 4. So here 4 minus 1 will be 3. So the value of k can go till 3. Right now the value of k is 1 which is less than 3. So the condition is true. So here ptr is equal to 1. So we have one more variable here that is ptr and the value of ptr is 1. So here we are assuming that right now this ptr is also having the value which is 1. Step number 3 says that repeat while ptr less than equal to n minus k. So here ptr can go till n minus k. So the ending value of ptr will be n minus k and we know that right now the value of n is 4. So here 4 minus k and we know that right now the value of k is 1. So here 4 minus 1 that will be equal to 3. So ptr can go till 3. The value of ptr is 1 which is less than 3. That means condition is true. So here a and B both part will run. In part A we have if A PTR. Here we know that the value of PTR is 1. So here A1 that is 4. So we are talking about the 4 that is greater than A PTR plus 1. So here A PTR plus 1 that means A2. So now the value of a2 is 3. So here we are checking is 4 greater than 3. Yes, the condition is true. In that case, the inside part will work that we are interchanging APTR with APTR plus 1. So that means 4 and 3 will change their position. So at the position of 4, 3 will come. And the position of 3, 4 will come. So they have interchanged. Now in the part B, PTR is equal to PTR plus 1. So here the value of PTR will be incremented. And the new value of PTR will be 2. So here PTR is now shifted to the next which is 2. It is a loop. So it will go back and check the condition. So here we have the condition that PTR should be less than or equal to n minus k. So here we can see that 2 is less than 3. That is perfect. So again part A and part B will work. In the part A we have a PTR. The value of PTR is 2. So that means a2 that means we are talking about the 4 
and that is greater than aptr plus 1 so here aptr plus 1 that means a3 so here we are talking about the 5 so here we are checking that is 4 greater than 5 but the condition is false so in that case interchanging will not happen b part says that set ptr is equal to ptr plus 1 so here the value of ptr is updated to 3 so hypothetically we can say that ptr is now on 3 it is a loop so it will go back and again checking the condition so here the condition is ptr should be less than equal to n minus k so here ptr is 3 which is less than equal to 3 condition is true in that case part a and part b will work in part a a ptr here the value of ptr is 3 that means a3 which is 5 so here 5 is greater than a ptr plus 1 that means a4 so here is 2 so it is checking that is 5 greater than 2 yes the condition is true so in that case interchanging will happen so here we are interchanging aptr with aptr plus 1 that means the value of 5 will be changed with 2 and the value of 2 will be changed with 5 now in the part b ptr is equal to ptr plus 1 so here the value of ptr will be 4 it is a loop so it will go back and again checking the condition so here it is checking that ptr is less than equal to n minus k so here we can see that 4 less than equal to 3 the condition is false so that means from inner loop it will come out so this was the pass 1 or the phase 1 of bubble sort for the better understanding i am recreating the array here we are writing the updated elements after pass 1 so first of all we are having is 3 so that 3 we are mentioning here then we have is the 4 so 4 we are mentioning then 2 so here at the third position we have 2 and then 5 so here we have represented the array again so after the phase 1 we can observe that here we have the 5 and we can see that this 5 is the largest element so after phase 1 or the pass 1 we have largest element to the top right hand side that's why the name of algo is bubble sort so after every phase we have one element that will be on the largest position then second largest and third largest and so on so now we are moving towards phase number two so after the phase one inner loop is completed and that will be going to the outer loop and here in the outer loop again we are going to repeat step two and three so here two and three will be repeated we know that earlier the value of k was one so that was already worked now the value of k will become and we know that it will work till n minus 1 that means till 3 so we have the value 2 so the loop will work so here in the phase 2 the value of k is on the 2 and we can see that in line number 2 the value of ptr will be set again to 1 so here the value of ptr will be 1 and will work till n minus k and this time we know that the value of n is 4 so here 
4 minus and the value of k is 2. So 4 minus 2 that means 2. So starting from 1 and going till 2 this PTR will work. So just like the phase 1 the inner loop will work and again it is going to check the APTR with the APTR plus 1. So here we can see that the 3 is not greater than 4. So in that case PTR will be moved to the next. So PTR will be 2. Now again the 4 will be compared with the 2 and here we can see that 4 is greater than 2. So whenever IPTR is greater than APTR plus 1 we know that we need to interchange. So here 4 will be converted to 2 and here 2 will be converted to 4 and afterward PTR will be incremented so the value of PTR will be 3 and we know that the PTR can go till 2 so here condition will false and inner loop is complete that means our pass 2 is complete. So for the better understanding I am again taking the array. Now we are writing the elements after phase 2. So the first element was 3 so it is coming in the new array then 2 so 2 is coming then 4. So here we are mentioning the 4. Bubble sort work on the single array but here we are using the different different array for the step by step representation so that we understand with the phase 1, 2, 3 and so on. So after the phase 2 we can observe that the second last element is at the proper position that means here 4 is the second largest element which is at the proper position after 5. So the bubble sort work in phases and after every phase we have the largest and second largest and so on elements at the proper position. That's why the name is given bubble sort means bubble by bubble we are going to sort the element. Now we are on phase number 3. In the similar manner as per the previous phases when the inner loop is complete so here it will be going back and again checking the condition. So here we know that the steps 2 and 3 so these two steps will be repeated for value of k started from 1. So for k1 we have already taken phase 1 for the value of k2 we have taken the phase 2. Now the value of k will be 3 and that can go till n minus 1 that means till 3. So 3 going till 3 so this is our last phase. So here the value of k will be now 3. On the line number 2 we have ptr is equal to 1. So again the ptr will be starting from 1. So here we are taking the PTR and that PTR is now again starting from 1. Same as the previous passes the inner loop will work and is going to check APTR with the APTR plus 1. So if APTR is greater than APTR plus 1 that means 3 is greater than 2 which is perfectly fine in that case they will be interchanged. So here 3 will be having the value 2 and 2 will be having the value 3. So they have interchanged. Then afterward PTR will be incremented. So the next value of PTR will be 2. In this case we can see that the PTR can go till n minus k and here the value of n is 4. So 4 minus and the value of k is 3. So 4 minus 3 is 1. That means PTR can go till 1 only. So PTR started with 1 and go till 1. But right now the value of PTR is 2. So PTR will no more work. So our phase 3 is complete. 
I am again showing the array for the better representation. I am representing the updated values in this array. So here the first was 2, the next was 3. So these are the values after phase 3. We know that after the phase 1 we was having the largest value at the proper position that is 5. Then after phase 2 we was having the second largest position that is 4 at the proper position. Now after the phase 3 we are having the third largest element which is 3 at the proper position. So this is the third largest element. We know that this was the last phase because afterward it will be going back to the outer loop and here we know that k was started from 1 it can go till n minus 1. n minus 1 means 3. So here for 1, 2 and 3, 3 phases have done and already the value of n minus 1 is 3. So 3 phases are done. So it will be going out of the loop and here we are having is the exit. So here we can see that in the bubble sort we are having the final answer where all the elements are arranged into the ascending order. So here 2, 3, 4 and 5 these are into the ascending order. And here we have observed that bubble sort work in phases and after every phase we have the largest, second largest and third largest and so on elements at the proper position. So these are just like bubbles. So bubbles are going one after the another. So this is how the name is given bubble sort.